friends, it's Gwen. Today is a craft room tour day. After 20 years in this space, I have repainted and recarpeted, and that meant that all of this needed to be moved for a short time. It's all back in, it's neat and tidy, so I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to share with you my organization tips and ideas. This is not my first craft room tour, so in this video, I'll be sure to also share what's working, what's not, and what's new. So I'll start with an overview of my craft space. This room is a bedroom in our family home. I believe it is three and a half meters square. It has a standard window and a standard bedroom wardrobe. All of the storage options are independent of the walls, so you could totally have this set up if you were renting. I have seen those beautiful custom shelves that a lot of the really big craft rooms have, but for me, I wanted the flexibility to be able to move and change things around as I needed. In fact, I have actually not always been in this particular room in our home. I originally was in our formal dining room area. The bulk of the pieces are from Ikea. I really love how modular their furniture is and how it all works together super, super well. But you might notice that my desk is a little bit different. In fact, it's not a desk at all. I opted for a dining room table over a desk because I knew I would get a much larger working area. Sure, I don't get drawers within the table itself, but I have a workaround for that, and that is a Raskog cart and then drawers in the Ikea shelves themselves. So for me, that's working super, super well. The other thing that's working super well is having zones within the space. So I have a silhouette zone, an area that I have all of my silhouette supplies. Right there is my paper zone. It's like a special shelving unit where I keep all of my papers. I have a zone for slow stitching and then card making. And I also now have a zone for business see things. So when I'm working on my business, I have all of those things in one area. I have created an in-depth video on this. I'll leave that in the description box below. The other thing that I do that may be a little bit different is that I store all of my collections together. I don't store individual products together. So I don't store washi tape together, then stickers together, papers together. I actually store most of my supplies by collection. So I have a bunch of 13 by 13 plastic tubs. You'll see those in a moment. Inside each tub, I have the complete collection. So washi tape, stickers, chipboard, papers, all together and all in the same place. I tend to scrapbook by collection, so I found it so much easier when I stored by collection. Now the shelving unit that all of the containers stack into, that was made by a local cabinet maker. I tend to keep things organized also by manufacturer, and these containers are the ones with my overflow. These ones are from Kmart. I have also seen them on Amazon and at the container store. I will leave links to all of the supplies that I can find in the description box below. Storing my collections together for me has been a game changer. It totally works. I would never go back. Now this set of drawers is one of the few things that's in the room that is not IKEA furniture. It's just an upcycle dresser that came from a children's bedroom. It houses a bunch of things. The top two drawers are mixed media supplies of which I probably have too many. Over the years, I have done a lot of work on purging and sorting out my stash. Having less absolutely works for me and I would recommend it for you too. And these supplies are actually high on my list to go through. I also did uh, quite a comprehensive video on how I store and organize my Distress Oxide inks. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Having supplies really clearly labeled and in consistent storage containers can really pull your space together and help it feel less cluttered and far more organized. 
You don't have to go all out and buy crazy expensive containers. What I look for though is containers that have a similar feel and sort of aesthetic to them. For example, the basket on the right there that I'm using as a catch-all, that was actually a basket that a Christmas hamper came in. Here is my photo storage. I don't print a lot of photos out in advance. I actually prefer to print and then scrapbook, but I do have a small selection stored there. The next drawer down contains the foam that I use to mount photos and things in scrapbooking. On the very right there is a box of Copic markers and on the left here is all of my sequin storage. And you guessed it, yes I have done an in-depth video on that too. I will leave that in the description box below. This tall dresser has been a really great way to store items that are larger than those that will fit in the IKEA unit. The IKEA units are great because they are modular, but they are limiting in that some larger items just won't fit inside them. The last two drawers are very boring but very practical. My recording gear, so stands for the phones and lights and bits and pieces. And then the very bottom drawer is office supplies, laminator, films, big trimmers, boring things. On to far more fun things. This is my silhouette station and this piece was also made custom by a local cabinet maker. I have two silhouette cameos and they are both stored here and then this drawer here houses all of the bits and pieces that go with them. I mainly use my silhouette for paper craft so I do not have a very large vinyl stash. What I do have gets stored right here. And here's my very complicated storage for pre-cut cut files. Yes, it's just a 13 inch by 13 inch Ziploc bag. I just cut um, in bulk and then keep them all stored here. If I need to travel with them, I will put them into a pizza box. This drawer is for alphabet thickers. So the ones that are a little bit more generic. So they probably did come out with a matching collection, but if they are white, black, pink, gold, and can be used on lots and lots of layouts, they end up here. The ones that have word titles and that are a bit more embellishment-like, they actually get stored with all the other supplies matching the collection. This drawer is filled with 3D albums and off the page projects. Next up, embossing folders and Sizzix accessories. I have a Sizzix fold away now and I purposefully bought that because it fits inside of the Ikea unit. My old machine did not fit, so the new one does the fold away. And then under here is stamps and dies. I have also created a full in-depth video on how I store and organize these. I will leave that in the description box below. Moving on to the largest piece of furniture in my craft space, and this is the 5x5 Calyx unit, and I have filled it with a few varieties of bins and drawers. Slow stitching is the other craft that I like to do, and I have two bins here filled with those supplies. There is a little bit of crossover as well because I do use vintage fabrics in my journaling, as well as sometimes even in my scrapbooking. One of the bins holds holds all of the vintage fabrics and um, slow stitching kits. And then here are my sewing supplies. So yeah, scissors, needles, all the essentials for stitching and sewing. Next up, we need to talk about layouts. And they're one of the things that, to be honest, I'm not sure whether this is working or not yet for me. This is a 13 by 13 inch Ziploc bag and then a piece of boring chipboard 12 by 12 and my layout and the chipboard piece just go in the Ziploc bag. And then I've been storing them standing up inside one of these boxes. It is a very inexpensive way to store layouts, which I love, but you can't really flip through them. You can't really look at them. So that's a problem. I do have some extra special layouts in those albums there as well. And there are some more layouts in the cupboard, which you will see later. I will go through some of the drawers here in this unit. 
I find these drawers to be quite small, which is good in a way because you can sort of keep things pretty macro organized, but a lot of things don't fit in them. So yeah, there's that. Lucky for me, my stash is kept pretty minimal. This drawer is filled with the magazines that I was a part of as the Scrapbooking Memories Master. That was a super special opportunity for me and I have marked all of my articles. Yeah, it was a great time. I'm not ready to let those ones go just yet. Next up, my extensive collection of washi. Yes, this is all the washi that I have. That's an old camera and some spare batteries. I think you'll find that I have less than most people and le certainly less than most people who've been scrapbooking for well over 20 years. I do like to keep the inventory of my stash low. And as you just saw there, several of the drawers are actually empty. I have two drawers of watercolor supplies. This one's mainly papers and palettes. Watercoloring is one of those things I wish I had more time for. It's kind of my fantasy craft. If ever I ran out of things to do with scrapbooking and paper crafting and slow stitching, I would love to do more watercoloring. So I have got a little bit bigger collection than I probably should have. Okay, so next I wanna show you these bins here. They're some of my favorites because they have a lid. So dust does not get in there. This one I keep all of my Canon selfie supplies. So the photo printer itself and then the ink behind there. I don't need to have things visible to remember that they're there. And in fact, I much prefer hidden away supplies. I would get very overwhelmed if everything that I owned was out and in sight. So I love storage like this. You can just pop everything in the little box and be on your way. Here is my adhesive drawer. I keep all of my adhesive in one place. So brown ones are for the ATG. That's the regular double-sided tape. I have liquid adhesive in here as well as spray adhesive. Here's a look at my extensive cardstock collection. This is all of it. Every piece of cardstock that I own right here. Sure, I could probably keep a lot more than that, but I love to have spaces within my studio that inspire me. So the studio is not just filled with practical supplies, but it's also filled with pretty things that will inspire me to be creative. Okay, so this is new. This unit was repurposed out of my daughter's room and it's the business sort of area section of the craft space. I sit here when I'm doing all of my boring business things and that helps me separate from my creative things. So when I'm doing creative things, I'm on the opposite side of the desk. The drawers in the center of the room store office supplies and everyday stationery, as well as computer cables and that kind of thing. As for my crafting supplies that I use day in, day out, they are all stored in a Rascog, which is right beside my desk. I keep a nice large bin to the left of that, super handy when I'm making a big paper crafty mess. And this is my view whenever I'm creating. So I guess you wanna have a look in the cupboard. I did not share this in the last video because it's not that exciting. Essentially, anything that is too large to fit in any of the storage that you've just seen gets whacked in the cupboard. There are a bunch more albums and see those blue boxes there? They are filled with even more layouts. And that friends is the one thing that is just not working. I have layouts everywhere and I don't know what to do with them. So I need your help. How do you store your scrapbook layouts? What's the best way? What way should I do? You've seen the three ways that I currently am doing it. I need some better options. Thanks for being here, my creative friends. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my craft room. If you're looking for even more scrapbooking and paper crafting ideas, be sure to check out this video right here and I will see you all next time. Until then, bye.